Call this meeting to order. We have the prayer and the pledge by Council Member Marlo Lewis. His bow and eyes closed to his utmost, his highest. Father, we come in the name of Jesus just to say thank you, Lord God, to allow us to meet one more again, Lord God. We thank you for your wisdom, your knowledge, and your understanding, Lord God. Help us to lead and govern this city in the way that you would have us lead, Lord God. Bless each and every one of our directors, our council, our constituents, and our community. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Mayor Pro Tem Dan Doyle. Here. Council Member Natalie Lopez. Present. Council Member Marlon Lewis. Here. Council Member David Broussard. Here. Council Member Deidre Ledbetter. Here. Council Member Sherry Guidry. Council Member Dustin Sawyer. Here. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Our first item on the agenda is public comment. Please remember you have three minutes. There's no back and forth. And uh, please put your cell phones on vibrate. We have one uh, commenter, Council Member, Parish Council Member, Ricky Gosselin. And he's going to be speaking on items five and six. Good evening. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Council. I appreciate the time and the effort to uh, you guys and let me speak for a few minutes. I came in support of uh, two council members tonight, uh, Mr. Swear and Ms. Guidry. Uh, I don't want to steal the Barry Queen's thunder, but we did adopt a resolution uh, accepting them as the ambassadors of the city of Iberia. And I see it's on your agenda tonight. I want to thank Ms. Guidry for following suit with the parish and supporting a group that's so vital to the interests of Iberia Parish and the city. I think, you know, when you uh, have a growing community and a, a community that wants to thrive, you need organizations like this to support initiatives in the parish to, to, to do better. So thank you guys and, and congratulations on your efforts. Um, second of all, I came to talk from Mr. Swear on the resolution that we adopted as a council on the T-Bayou outlet. I spoke to Mr. Kenny, uh, Mr. Uh, Nick Sims today with the core engineers. We're setting up a meeting next week to discuss options on the table of what plans we can participate in to support participation with funding to clean Lake Dotree to improve the drainage of T-Bayou. We all know that you know the, this, the north side of town is growing rapidly. We're pouring more cement, more rooftops, and we've spent as a, as a council and also as a city uh, $850,000 three years ago to uh, clean T-Bayou out to improve the drainage, and it worked dramatically. It really had made a big improvement in the area, but as we see the community growing on that side of town, it's obvious that uh, we can't dig T-Bayou any wider to accommodate the drainage, and that's foreseen as the new school going up in Bell Place, we're having to dig a... David's here can attest a two-acre retention pond to uh, hold the water because we don't want to exaggerate the water going to the T-Bayou. So with that thought process, we want to continue to improve our drainage on the north end of town. And I would like to speak with the Corps to try to do some dredging in the lake to increase the capacity of the water flow coming down. So we'd like to speak with the Corps and like the city to come on board with a resolution of the parish to dual support us going to the Corps and seeing where we can get the funding to possibly either dredge the uh, lake as a retention area or some other out, uh, sourcing with pumps to uh, down the road. You know, we need to be proactive. If our community is gonna grow, we do nothing, nothing happens. But if we're proactive, this may be two years down the road, but we need to start the effort to improve our drainage and make sure our citizens are protected. And thank you guys for the time, appreciate it. Thank you. Item number two, Madam Clerk. Acceptance of the minutes of the September 5th, 2017 meeting as published on September 18th, 2017. Do you have a motion? So moved. Motion by Council Member Lewis. Do I have a second? Second. Council, that was a tie. Uh, <laughs> Councilwoman <laughs> Chair Gidry. Do we have any discussion? Hearing no discussion, vote your machines. Motion carries. Thank you. Item number three, Madam Clerk. Persons to address the council, Ms. Charisse, Charisse Picard, Executive Director of Shes Hope for receipt of proclamation from the governor for national domestic violence awareness for the month of October. 
Good afternoon, Mayor and Council, and thank y'all for having me here today. Um, October is the National Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and Shea Hope will be holding a grand opening for our new office on October 26th at our office located at 501 West Admiral Doral Drive. We'll also have a candlelight vigil that night at Bulleny Plaza at 7 o'clock in the evening, and we invite everyone to attend. Since Shea Hope uh, began services in Iberia Parish in February, we have done 120, assisted in filling out 125 domestic violence restraining orders, and we have served over 730 men, women, and children in Iberia Parish. So we're, we're very glad to be able to provide this service. We're also working closely with Councilwoman Lopez on bringing bully free kids pro a bully free kids program into the school system as well as a hands are not for hitting program and a teen dating violence program we've met with the school board and they have approved our programs and we have, have also done presentations for all the principals in Iberia Parish so they have begun um, calling and scheduling their presentations so we're very excited to bring this into Iberia Parish as well so I just wanted to say thank you for our support and we hope to see you all at the grand opening in the vigil Thank you. And we Thank have a you. proclamation. Yes. Uh, okay. And it's for Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Whereas the crime of domestic violence violates an individual's privacy and dignity, security, and humanity due to the physical, emotional, sexual, psychological, and economic control and or abuse. Whereas the problem of domestic violence are not confined to any group or groups of people, but crosses all economic, racial, and societal barriers and are supported by societal indifference. Whereas the problem of domestic violence and wide-ranging, not only affecting the individuals, but society as a whole. Whereas our homes should be a place of warmth, love, tranquility, peace, and security. I therefore, Mayor of the City of New Iberia, proclaim the month of October 2017 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month and urge all citizens to actively participate in the activities and programs to work towards improving victim safety and holding perpetrators of domestic violence accountable with the understanding that world peace begins at home. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I'll give you this proclamation, and thank you for coming, and thanks for okay. all you do. It's, uh, it's amazing how many people you've already reached. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you. all your efforts. Any comments? Yes. Um, I would just like to say that, um, you know, I know every community has programs of this sort in some way, shape, or form, be it through private funding, public funding, sheriff departments, whatever you want to call it. Um, but I've known Sharice for probably 12 years, and we really couldn't ask for a better person to be with us and volunteering her time and her energy. She's put like her whole career into serving other people. Her daughter works with her as well and has followed in the footsteps. And I just want to express to our city and our parish that the program we have is truly funded by more than just money and donations. It's funded by people who really, really care. Like this is their life, that's what they do. So I just, you know, I wanna give her her props because, you know, she spends all day making other people try to feel better. Thank you, thank you. All right, we'll move on to agenda item number four. Recon recommendations from the Planning and Zoning Commission Final approval of resub division and lot size variance for two residential lots located at 1700 and 1704 Week Street, zoned R2, owned by Rodney Babineau. Do we have a motion? Motion. Motion by Councilor Broussard. Second. Do we have a second? Councilor Woman Sherry Gidry. Do we have some discussion? It's in my district. Yeah, it's a minor little line. Just Petty wants to move it. Okay. Nobody called in opposition, so. We're going to help Rodney in the passes. Okay. If you okay as a conscience. Good. Any further discussion on this side? Hearing none, please vote your machines. There you go, Rodney. Good. Thank you. Agenda item 4B. Preliminary subdivision approval for four lots from a greater 6.7 acre tract located on J. Allen Dague Drive, owned by Christopher Chris Turner. Do you have a motion? Motion. Motion by Councilwoman Ledbetter and a second by Mayor Pro Tem Dahl. Do we have any discussion on this side? I had a question. Yes. Uh, Jane, is this the properties that they bought from the city, <laughs> those empty lots? Yes. Yes? It yeah, it's Good. a 6.7 acre tract, and he's carving from that tract four lots, cool. which uh, 
he's going to build homes on. Because he bought uh, multiple um, lots in that area, correct? Well, it's it's it was a one track. Flat. It's it was an one track. undeveloped track. Okay, okay six, cool. Six point seven acres. Okay, thank you. Further questions? Hearing none, please vote your machines. Motion carries. Four C. Rezone and approval for property located on JL and Dave Drive, owned by Christopher Chris Turner, as per legal description dated August 16, 2017, by Charles D. Moore, PLS, for the 1.173 acre track, four lots from OL to R1. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion by Councilwoman Ledbetter. Need a second. Second. Uh, Councilman Swear. Do we have any discussion? Hearing none, please vote your machines. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Madam Clerk, 4D. Special use, conditional use permit approval to Roland Jean Louis, owner of 811 Anderson Street, containing three commercial buildings located on a lot that is zoned R3, is no longer non conforming for commercial use. The building's use will be as follows with no alcohol sales on premises. Building number one, beauty shop, accessories, retail. Building number two, food service, restaurant, takeout, dine-in, retail sales. And building number three, food, snacks, snowballs, retail sales. Great. Need a motion? So move. So moved by Councilman Lewis. I need Seconds. a second. Uh, Teacher. Councilwoman Ledbetter. He's fast enough. Mm -hmm. do, do we have any discussion on this item? It's, it's in my district. Yes, sir. Uh, just want to say thank you to uh, Mr. and Mrs. John Lewis for, for yep. trying to do something to uplift the district. Uh, Anderson Street used to be uh, famous, along with Hopkins Street. A lot of uh, historic business owners uh, did business on that end. Uh, Mr. Harry Dauphine, uh, Mr. Caesar, uh, T.B. Harrison, uh, Ms. Martha Brooks. All of those people were legendary in our community, and the community has died since. So when I see Mr. John Lewis and Mr. John Lewis come to our community and try to uplift something, it just makes me feel good. Thank y'all. Definitely. And I support the endeavors 100%. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Further comments? Yes. Um, I just want to um, I'm say that I'm excited as well um, for a new business to be erected up in District 2, and I fully support that. And I think I saw snowballs or something to that. Mm -hmm. My kids and I will be there just about every other day. We love snowballs, so consider us your, your new customers. Thank you so much for investing in um, our city. Anything further? Please vote your machines. Great. I know Roland and his family can do a great job, and we're excited about your investment. If you need some help, let me know. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number five. Resolutions. Okay. Resolution in support of a grant application to the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries through the Sport Fish Restoration Wallop Bro Program for assistance in implementation of the construction of boat slips, transient motorboats, called a Boating Access Project. I have a couple of people. Let's see. Paul's here. Mm -hmm. Jane's here. Uh, this is the boat slips that we've been talking about behind City Hall. As you all know, we can't tie boats up at Bullion Plaza anymore because we were notified that it's in the Corps of Engineers. Uh, it's in a pay. We can't use it. It's in there right away, so we can't no longer do that. So the idea is to utilize. We have an existing bulkhead. Is to utilize and put the boat slips here. As you'll see in the presentation, we'll be getting a bathroom and dump station from Paul that he uh, will be locating from his property. So it would give us a full little marina. We have plans in the future to do a little addition to that. As you look at the match, they'll go over it. My big line is look at the bottom. It's a 10 to 1 investment. We put up 50000 and we get half a million. Uh, I think it's well worth doing. And uh, anyway, I'll let them explain the project. Oh, wait. We probably need a motion first. Yes, we do. Yeah, I know. I'm catching it up. Thank you, Clark. Uh, so do I have a motion? Motion. Motion by Councilwoman Sherry Guidry. Do I have a second? Second. Mapro Tim Dahl, great. Now we can have our little presentation. Thank you. The uh, the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries and the U.S. Department of Wildlife and Fisheries uh, has been uh, very engaged in investing in New Iberia. Uh, several projects have already occurred. 
um, the boat launch in City Park was a major project that was recently funded. I think it was an area neighborhood of $350,000. Um, the project behind my office was uh, funded through the U.S. Department of Wildlife and Fisheries and the State Department of Wildlife and Fisheries. Um, as part of our project, we have what was called a CVA system, which is a Clean Vessel Act system. Uh, the attempt is through the Clean Water Act is to try to clean up the waterways in Louisiana. There's also a floating restroom project, which was also funded. Uh, we have a 10-year period for the existence of the project, and our 10 years has lapsed. Um, it's an opportunity for the city to receive at least $190,000 donation, which uh, we can uh, locate behind City Hall. Mark Bayrod with uh, Bayrod and Habits has been working with us on this project, and he's come up with this design for the development of the waterfront. What's beautiful about this is that there's an existing bulkhead system, and it's in good structural shape. So uh, the idea is to mimic exactly what's been done in City Park for uh, an opportunity for the public to interface with the water. Um, we are required to accommodate transient boats, which boats that would travel uh, down the intercoastal waterway. The intercoastal waterway is very popular uh, in Texas and in Florida. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of a resort air, a resort interstate for boat travel. Uh, a lot of developments have occurred on the interstate, uh, on the intercoastal waterway, and any, any navigational um, channel that connects to the intercoastal waterway has an opportunity for funding. So um, this is an opportunity that uh, the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries has offered. Um, the, the mayor has uh, accepted the opportunity to, uh, to go after this fund, funding mechanism. Um, it, it will take care of uh, some dredging that needs to be done to deepen the channel. It will take care of some docking facilities. Uh, again, the relocation of floating restrooms. Um, and there's a, a match component uh, that Jane can talk about, uh, which helps to cover the responsibility of the match, which is 25% of the total value of the grant. Yes, yeah, so, um, the match, the 25%. Uh, required match um, allows for in-kind donations, so we're working those into um, the project just as, as m much as we can, you know, to eliminate the cash. So, um, and it also will allow for the land value. So, you know, the good news is that we own the land, so we'll be able to use that as a portion of our, our match. Um, what, what's exciting about this is that uh, Miss Melissa with Wildlife and Fisheries has been in discussions mm -hmm. with us. We've met with her several times. She came down to New Iberia and met with us. Um, she's terribly excited to have New Iberia involved in, uh, in securing these funds. Uh, we, we did recently apply for a fund for the Big P program, and uh, we were the only applicants, so there's a good chance in March you'll receive those funds as well. In the state. From the state level, so it, it, it's an opportunity. The Wild Brew Fund was developed by uh, Senator Bro uh, when uh, when the um, uh, it, it's an it's an opportunity to take monies from those people that buy fishing licenses and recreational licenses and trolling licenses, and they take a portion of those dollars aside for infrastructure development along all of our waterways in Louisiana. So it actually gives an opportunity for the citizens to get connected to the water. And so this is a, a great opportunity. I strongly encourage the council to support this resolution for the project. Any questions? Any questions? Um, yes. The map. You want to kind of explain that, what we are looking at right here? So sure. Right here, the, the if, you, uh, if you turn it in this orientation like this. Yes, sir. OK. Um, and, and if you look in this direction, you're looking at the Bayou Tech. Yes, sir. Um, the gray uh, portion of the map is the Bayou Tech itself. Mm -hmm. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has a, um, a definition of what they call the navigational fairway, is where the boat traffic travels, and that's the dredge component of the Bayou. That's where all the commercial traffic travels. Uh, in order for us to qualify for this, um, for this app, uh, for this structure, for this project, we had to meet the requirements of the Corps, which means that we're not in that ga navigational width. Unlike Bulleny Plaza, unfortunately, what's happening there 
is that the edge of the steel bulkhead that's over there is in the navigational width. So you cannot do a single addition over there. Otherwise, there's just use of liability should somebody get hit or hit a boat or something like that. So they're not encouraging you to use that facility whatsoever because it doesn't meet the core requirement. So there is an opportunity because there are a number of boats that like to travel the water to tie, to tie behind City Hall. And so um, we do meet the navigational core requirements. The, the, the facilitator for the grant said don't apply unless you meet them. So we do meet them. So anyway, that do you understand? Yes, the, yes. yes I do. Okay, Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also, there's a, a beautiful green space with some oaks along the edge of the water. Mm -hmm. Want to kind of develop that as a little pocket park. Also, um, they're going to try to introduce some lighting uh, for light stanchions. And they'll have uh, amenities for boaters to tie mm -hmm. up and connect to, uh, which will be water, electricity, and those kind of things. So boats need to uh, not only dispose of the sewer, but they also need to refresh their tanks. So the, sh so the show power and the things that's required for the boat to be plugged up at the docks, that's where that part would be, by the little pocket park right here? Yeah, well, along the edge of the entire uh, uh, waterfront area, there'll be electrical power right. available to they need to connect to. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Thank you. Any further questions? I ask you to please vote your machines. Great. Thank you for the support. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you all very much. Madam Clerk, Bobby. Resolution proclaiming the Berry Queens as the official goodwill ambassadors of New Iberia. And I see we have a bunch of Berry Queens here. Uh, if you all would like to come up. Don't be shy. What? Nope. All right. Uh, can I have a motion? Motion. Uh, Councilwoman Sherry Gigi and a second by Councilwoman Ledbetter. Great. Thank you. Good. Good to see y'all. Yeah, thanks, thanks for coming. For us. Thanks we for coming. I have a proclamation to read. All right. Uh, you have, have some remarks first? We'd just like to thank you all for considering us. You know, we uh, are women from all across New Iberia and Iberia Parish, and we work like the rest of you because we love this city and we want it to thrive and do well and our first goal of course is to raise money for our habitat but we also want to raise money for other things in our community and help better uh, new iberia because we all have a heart for it um you know it's no surprise that darlene and roland are uh very queens too well roland's not but he <laughs> might as well be. <laughs> but uh we just uh love that everybody joins in and gets involved and of course the first year in 2008 10 years ago when we started um it was a lot different than it is now but we've grown and um the community has been really supportive and uh, we thank you for all that you do so that it allows us to do what we love to do too so thank you Thank you all. I'll read the proclamation. At, whereas the Berry Queen is the fun, Berry Queens are the fundraising arm of Iberia Habitat for Humanity. Whereas membership has exceeded 100 members who have all contributed their time and talents in raising $130,000 plus for Iberia Habitat for Humanity. Whereas the Berry Queens have provided community service assistance as needed by, to other organizations that serve our community, including Angel Paws, Party, Drug Court, Tesh Museum, Sugar Cane, Festival, Spanish Festival, Literary Festival, Beneath the Balconies, Gumbo Cook-Off, <laughs> Burger Cook-Off, Hats and Horses, uh, Princess Pearls and Pumps, Very Berry Christmas Parade, St. Francis Diner, <laughs> and the Dale Iberian Citizen of the Year. And I'm sure I forgot some, because I see all that everywhere. Uh, we now, therefore, uh, as the mayor of the city of New Iberia, proclaim the Berry Queens as the official goodwill ambassadors of New Iberia. Thank and thank you all enough, uh, all that y'all do. Thank you. And we just want to tell y'all, we've been claiming to be the Goodwill Ambassadors for about 10 <laughs> years, so thank y'all for making us Now it's on paper. Now it's on paper. Now it's a issue. And a special thank you to Councilwoman Sherry Gidry at District 5 for getting this resolution on the agenda and for the hard work you do for us in Council 5, uh, District 5. We certainly appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, I also wanted to um, just say um, to the Berry Queens as well, uh, real quickly, that um, that their um, social influence has been uh, deeply respected and appreciated in our community. And um, we want to thank y'all again for y'all sacrifice and everything that you all do to raise money to help our citizens that are in need. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second on the floor, I think. Did we do one yet? Because we yeah. need to vote on this. We did, yes. but now I just did the presentation, so let's make it official. Please vote. <laughs> now it's official. Great. Thank you all.
Now we move on to agenda item six. Items for discussion by Ms. Sherry Guidry, nuisance ordinances. Sure. Need to make a motion? No, just discussion. Okay. Um, I requested uh, this to be put back on the agenda uh, for an update on what has taken place from uh, the meetings that uh, took place several months ago concerning the nuisance or the junk car ordinance. Um, I originally placed the junk car ordinance on the agenda several months back due to several of my constituents complaining that their cars were tagged and not understanding the actual procedure in order to resolve the issue. Uh, furthermore, if their car has been tagged and it was noticed after hours, um, I referred my constituents to the website of this city. Well, to my surprise, as an average citizen myself, in order to an answer their questions, being, being a newly elected official, um, I looked up some things and I found that it's kind of hard for the average citizen to find everything they need about a tagged car on the website. Um, it's in chapters 38, chapters 55, and chapters 94. For the solution to this problem um, from meetings months ago, I asked my colleagues to weigh in, if you all remember, um, on some suggestions and solutions that we can do to help tweak um, this ordinance um, a while back. And I think one of the challenges um, was the 15-day rule that's on the code of ordinance, um, that the person had 15 days to get it all straight and corrected. And, um, and uh, we know that's somewhat of a problem as well because sometimes some people don't, they order the parts. If you come back, the part might be wrong. That's half of your 15 days. You got different circumstances for different people. Um, I'm requesting with the help of the council and support of the mayor and the city attorney that the ordinance be changed to 15 business, from 15 business working days to 30 days. I think we kind of came up with that. Um, the last time uh, with our suggestions, reasoning, be, reasoning being different circumstances. And I'm also requesting with the help of the council, the mayor, and the city attorney that all information concerning junk cars be placed in one area of the city's website um, so that the average citizen after five o'clock and they get home and they need to understand what this tag means, at least they can go to the city's website and have um, some type of uh, guidance. Lastly, um, after hearing all the discussion from Mayor Freddy and the, um, the council, with um, the mayor's permission, I'm requesting that we form some type of little committee or a quorum to help critique some of the challenges um, and make it clear and plain to the citizens of New Iberia, maybe a detailed list or uh, possibly how to uh, follow steps in order to um, remove the tag off your car or questions that you have um, and things like that. So that's why I put it back on the agenda to be discussed again and see what we've done so far as an update. Thank you, Mayor. Great. I'm going to call on Jeff Simon and he can give us an update. Um, I'm all for the committee, but we'll get to that next. You know, I, asked, I asked that we talk about some broader questions here. The the nuisance ordinances are the ordinances that we have that deal with litter and junk and abandoned vehicles, which is vehicles that have been left in public places, and junk vehicles, that is vehicles that are inoperable, that are on private property, and um, some derelict buildings and weeds. And all of those not very interesting things we call nuisances, and we have a set of ordinances to deal with them. And if you try to read the code of ordinances as it's presently written, we have a number of different chapters that talk about kind of the same thing. So uh, when we deal with vehicles, there are four different sections that deal with different kinds of vehicle problems. And I think what happened was we had a set of ordinances in 76, and then in 04, we adopted a bunch of new ordinances, and they just got placed in there with the 76 ordinances. So it's really confusing. It really is. So. Um, I talked to Liz Abair months ago, and Liz did a lot of work and sent to me a revision of the nuisance portion of the code of ordinances. And I suggested that instead of just dealing with the vehicle part, and we do, and we talk about the 30 days, that we talk about all of these things because they're all related and they all have some common issues. So what I have before you 
is some work that I didn't do, Liz Abear did it, and she's the one who deals with this on a day-to-day -day basis. And this is a set of draft ordinances that she did that kind of combine some of the old rules and simplify some of the old rules and make them clear. And it deals with junk, abandoned and junk vehicles, grass weeds, and things like that. So one of the things that I asked is that uh, you folks be given these drafts, that you take a look at them, and that you try to figure out what it is that you'd like to change uh, in these ordinances. And then I suggested one of the ways we could deal with this instead of talking about the details at a council meeting and trying to draft ordinances kind of in public at a council meeting is that we have some committee put together. Now a committee of, the, uh, of a public body is going to be a public body, you know, so we're going to follow the rules. But if we have some volunteers who'd be willing to, you know, sit down with us and work on this, I think we could clear up some of this stuff. And I know Jimmy's worked on this, and Liz has worked on this, and there are some practical issues that we have to deal with. But uh, so one of the things that we can do to try to clean up the city is to address these nuisance ordinances <coughs> and clear those up. Another thing that we would need to do is we'll need to know that it costs money to enforce these things because when we deal with um, an abandoned car, we have to determine ownership, we have to give certain legal notices, we have to haul the thing off. If we're dealing with weeds, we have to determine ownership, give notices, go on the property, you know, cut the weeds, cut the grass, and sometimes you don't know what's under those weeds and grass, and you've got to quit <coughs> um, When we deal with demolitions, you know, that can be really expensive. Sometimes we're dealing with asbestos, properties have to be evaluated and then we have the right in most of these situations to get the money back if the assets worth it or the people are worth it and usually neither one is <laughs> so these are not money makers and if we're going to go through these processes and we're going to have the inspection department which hopefully you know should be doing construction inspections right not yeah. demolition inspections That's what I'm hoping. but if we're going to have them do this kind of work that, that money needs to be budgeted. And some of that is gonna involve some legal determinations and some legal opinions. So we need to clean up the ordinances. We need to allocate money that, um, that's necessary for the administrative process to get that done. And the third thing is uh, we need to take a look at enforcing some of these ordinances through city court prosecutions for misdemeanors. Um, I know if you read the section 1.1-8 in the beginning of our code of ordinances, it says a violation of the code of ordinances is punishable by up to $500 in fine and up to 60 days in prison, which for a lot of these folks is going to catch their attention. Uh, I met with Ann Stevens and asked her how these things have been enforced in the past. Ann is our city prosecutor, very uh, experienced. I respect her a whole lot, known her a long time. She's very dedicated to her job. She says she's ready to go do this work again. But part of that is going to, um, part of what we need is some cooperation in law enforcement because we're not ticketing for those things right now. We're not dealing with those right now. It's not a priority under the present contract. And uh, misdemeanor prosecutions for this kind of thing have fallen way off. <clears throat> so if we have a department of our own, our police department of our own, we're going to have to tune this in. I think we can hopefully do some uh, misdemeanor prosecutions to remedy some of these situations and discourage some of this behavior. If we don't and we renew a contract, then we'll have to sit down and talk to the sheriff about a way to build that into the contract to get better service than we're getting now, which is going to cost more money, which goes back to my point a while back that the law enforcement we need is going to cost, it's going to cost us more money either way. Um, so I think if we clean up our ordinances, if we budget money for the departments that have to do this kind of work to, um, to do the administrative work, to give the notices, to go through the processes, that will help. If we can bring back misdemeanor prosecutions and some of these things, that will help. Um, but I think the council, you know, you need to decide, and I know you've talked about this with demolitions. Um, you got to pick and choose your fights here because some of these things are going to be really important to clear up and some of these things are maybe not as critical.
and all of this stuff is expensive. And if you look around town, you've got grass violations and junk violations and junk cars and dilapidated buildings. I mean, I can walk a few blocks from my That's office right. or my house or anybody's office or house <coughs> and find these things. So they're out there. So uh, we can do, all we can do is all we can do. So we can clear up the ordinances and, and, and try to get this together. So I'm certainly willing to work with a committee of the council and with Liz and Jimmy to try to tighten up these things and uh, maybe do some education of the public about you know how we can comply with this. And I know there are some particular cases y'all have talked to me about, but let's try to get the general plan here where the ordinances make sense and where we know what an abandoned car is, we know what a junk vehicle is, and so on and so forth. I also talked to Jimmy uh, before the meeting and Liz this afternoon about the concerns about the junk vehicles. And I think the first priority is gonna be to get the ordinance written the way we want it to be so that we will be able to give the information on the website or individually based on what the ordinance says. We've already got a little summary, I mean a little uh, change that, that gives them 30 days to move a vehicle or, uh, or license it or whatever. But I think we need to figure out what the rules are going to be before we explain it to people. And then we'll do the best we can. Maybe a new sticker. You know, Jimmy suggested we have a, a, a maybe a revised orange sticker that we stick on the car so that when they get tagged, the tag will tell them more information than it does now. But I'm afraid they're going to have to catch us during business hours because, um, you know, we can't be 24 hours a day answering people's questions about, about junk cars. And if a car is tagged because it's inoperable, that's a different solution than if it's tagged because it's unlicensed or tagged because it's abandoned. So there's going to be different answers to those questions. But, you know, I'm certainly willing to work with Jimmy and with Liz to, to work through that stuff and with Councilman McHedry, who's... Um, kind of spearhead of this effort. So this is a starting point. Uh, it's homework if you want to do it. Take a look at these things and see if you can uh, make some suggestions about clarifying them or uh, deciding, you know, what uh, what we need to do. The uh, And think about how the approach that we're going to take to do this because if we're serious about this, we need to get tough. If we're not going to get tough, we shouldn't waste the money. That's right. Question. Yeah, Dustin. Dustin. Oh, okay. yeah. Go ahead, Dustin. Yeah, you don't you, mind. You, no, you had oh, your finger. Okay. Sure. Go. When it comes to homework, I don't like doing homework. Okay, go ahead. That's why I said you could but, uh, skip it if you want. <laughs> um, when we talk about the 30 days, we did talk about 30 calendar days, not 30 working days, right? Well, we did, we did bring that up a few times in that last meeting. We and did, and uh, Councilman Lewis, if I, if I'm, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think he said that. Um, if it was 30 business, I'm sorry, 15 business working days, then it should have been, if we're going to change it, it should be 30 business working days instead of 15 That's business. Good. But that, but then when we look at the, the time frame, it, it, it seems like it's too much if you include the weekends and stuff like right, that. Right. So 30 days. So 30 days. Uh, is okay, whatever y'all want. Uh, talk about the cover <laughs> issue as well? I'm sorry? The cover issue. Issue. I think we're going to end up Broussard. in a committee. To, yeah. to, I think where we're heading, yeah. we have a lot of small issues like that. Yeah. So I think I that's why. That up I know. That was yeah. a good, that I know was that good that issue. We're gonna, that's why we're going to have a committee. Uh, I, think think we're gonna have a I think both those issues are in 5531 yes. and 5533. 30 calendar days. Yes. Because yeah. I took the comments from the meeting yes. and sent them to Liz, and Liz revised her new and improved stuff to include that. So this is a new improved, yes. deleted of uh, some of the old stuff that we had originally. So this is um, up to date. Yes. Uh, upon our our request to maybe change some things after committee, correct? Right. So this is not the same as what was given to us at that meeting. Of the old ordinance. Right. No, it's been moving. Okay. No. And this is Liz's hard work, not mine. Okay. okay. Hang on. Yeah. Right now. Um, just for clarification purposes, I guess when we get a, the next one or whatever, maybe we can put um, a footer of when it was revised 
And also, I would like Jeff if it's not too much, if they can um, highlight or put in a different color the changes. You know how you can do that in documents? <laughs> that way we're not like hunting for what was changed. Like that way I don't have to print the ordinance and be like this all day trying to figure out what five words. Does that make sense to everyone? It, it, it's it easier does. for us and, to see the changes. And Liz told me today why she didn't do it that way with most of this. And it's because we've got we have vehicles covered in two different chapters. Okay. So it's not just a case of changing so she's merging. one set of rules. She's merging yeah. paragraphs. Yeah. So we could redline it, but what? redlining it really wouldn't help. Okay. Or maybe Footers, just yeah. maybe just footnote the paragraphs that have changes with where the changes came from if we want to reference back yeah. before we actually adopt an ordinance. Which mm -hmm. that, That's just why I asked about it. Just at least footnote it. You know, like well, this paragraph can, whoever, changes come from you know chapter 38 gonna, and chapter 94. I can cite, and I can cite the state statutes that are the foundation for all Stuff yeah, just like we can follow it a little better. Yeah, yeah. But, mm -hmm. cool. but first question is, what do you want? Yeah. Okay, I don't know who had the hand up first. Uh, I, I did, but I okay. put mine back down. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you can go then, <laughs> since but, you and but I. If Mr. Sure. Destin wants to go. Yes, <laughs> you can go. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, about the enforcement issue, we talked about it a lot. Um, no disrespected officers in the back, but at the same time. We send Mr. Mr. Landry out to do it. He does his job. He actually does more than one job. He does permitting, yeah. and he does his use of laws and goes Inspection. back. One of my issues was he went and tagged the vehicle. The vehicle was towed. Next week later, the guy put the vehicle on the other side of the house. Yeah. So, it's, he was right. We don't have the the backup to come behind and really enforce and help him <clears> out and give him that back if he needs. So that's one of the issues we have right now in enforcing ordinances. And I think. We're on the right track when it comes to benefiting from a PD standpoint. So, just wanted to point that out. Thank you. Are you sure it's my turn? Yes, okay. ma'am. It's your turn. Okay. Um, um, just so it doesn't get lost in the shuffle, um, a detailed list for our average citizens on what takes place once you get the tag, maybe something that you can actually follow um, in case if it's after hours and stuff like that. Okay. Okay. So I don't know if that comes with a committee or what. Yeah, but, I think I think we'd work but, that through a committee. Okay. And what I'd like to do, uh, we, this will be the first committee that we form. Actually, we've been all here eight months. We haven't formed any committees. So what I'd like you to do is just put your name in to me if you want to. You know, whoever wants to. How many people can we have, Jeff, on a committee? Well, you can have a committee Support. in the pool if you want to. Doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> I mean, if we don't, do we have to worry about having a quorum issue? Do we have to have three and not four? That's why I'm asking. We can have meetings of council people with me or with you if it's not a quorum and we don't have an issue. If that formal, formal committee, then it is a public body and we do have to follow the rules. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. So if you want a formal, formal committee, then you have to have open meetings. If you want to have like two or three council members meet with me, we can do that here. We don't have to have a formal meeting. I mean, a formal committee. We don't have to follow the uh, okay open right, the public meeting rules. I'm I'm good either way. That's uh, either way. That's a decision we'll have to make. We'll have to make it tonight. But basically, whoever is interested in serving on this committee, please let me know, and then we'll get with Jeff and figure out how you know the mechanics of it are going to work and get it going. That's great. That's exciting. Uh, Natalie, I see you had your hand up. Yeah. Yeah, um, another, well, two things. One, I don't need to be on the committee. If y'all want to just do a small committee, I don't need to be on the committee. I'm committed out right now. Okay. Um, and I trust that whatever y'all do, y'all will come back and represent it to us truthfully as a council to make our decisions. So I'm cool with that. Um, and this is my other thing, and I guess I'm going to stir the pot a little bit. Um, let's say the tax does not pass. Can the marshal's office deputize Jimmy to write citations? <laughs> yes, I did. Wait, what? Can the marshal's office deputize Jimmy and he can write citations? We or Dennis? I'm not sure about that. And we have a marshal, and Mr. Vick's a very competent marshal. And I think we'll have to talk to Mr. Vick about that. He's the marshal. We know. No, I know. I'm asking, do we know if it's legally possible that we can deputize Jimmy? Does he have to be, the, does it have to be a post-certified officer to go write city ordinance tickets? I guess that's my question, Jeff. I don't know. Yeah. But that's my million dollar question. Do you have to be post-certified to go out and write tickets on behalf of 
the marshal's office. It, I, I don't think so. Well, because you remember. Don't think gets us in trouble. But you better wait for me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you remember the, the, the uh, senior citizens wrote tickets for um, handicap parking? I don't remember. Made that. many dollars for the city. <clears throat> remember that? Yeah. What was the group called? And it was Remember senior that. citizens writing tickets and putting them on the windshield of the people that was parking a handicap without a sticker or a little thing hanging. And we made big bucks. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what happened to the people. They might have passed away. <laughs> but, um, I think it made a lot of people mad. I know, but they did it. <laughs> well, anyway. Why don't we wait till after our police election in less than a month and find out what happened? But yeah, so I mean, I do, I want to know the answer to that. Um, because some of the bailiffs in court, I mean, I don't know, you know, but I know some of them are not, you know, were, have not been street officers. They're not post certified. So, you know, I kind of want to know what their, uh, what the possibilities of that are. Okay, uh, can we deputize Jimmy? I haven't and I'm not that. sure if Jimmy wants to be deputized. <laughs> we didn't and ask Jimmy. Why don't we wait? wait. That wasn't part of the question. Can we pay Jimmy question. more money as his <laughs> third job? Anyway, let's come together. All right, all right, all right. We all got to stop. Good. <laughs> on that note, we're going to move on to our next agenda item. Thank you all very much. We've chased all the queens out of the room. Yes. <laughs> Ms. Sherry Gidry, Tight and Right Neighborhood Cleanup Initiative. We need a motion or anything, ma'am? No, no, it's discussion. Okay. Um, the Tight and Right Neighborhood Cleanup Initiative. I've been trying to figure out and wreck my brains, trying to figure out how can I help and address some of the um, challenges and uh, problems that um, um, I've been getting uh, through calls, um, 80 to 90 percent of my calls come from specific areas within my district and I'm trying to best um, address the needs of my constituents. So I came up with something which I prayed about of course called Tight and Right Neighborhood Cleanup Initiative and I've been praying about how I can assist the people in the downtown area. Um, near Ann Streets and the side streets and all those that little area right there. Um, I want to I want to encourage pro-social behavior and being that I received many calls from that particular area, um, we want to initiate maybe some cleanup challenges. And I decided as a leader of this community and to demonstrate what seems to be difficult and unpopular and make it popular and next exert effort to propel people to act and not just keep on talking about it on what we're going to do. Therefore, with the help of the mayor, the city workers, I'm kicking off an opportunity for neighbors to gather together to help neighbors, to influence neighbors by changing old norms and uh, bad habits and bring a bright light to the public discourse that we're experiencing. And I'm asking specifically that anyone that lives in that downtown area uh, or anywhere else in my district that want to walk the neighborhood with us and pick up any trash or debris within the right of way, not going in people's yards or anything, but in the right of way area um, to give me a call. And, uh, or you can call City Hall as well um, to sign up and to help out. Um, so far, I haven't had an overwhelming response just by asking people. I have not made it really official, so as of tonight, it is official. And um, I want to um, put this event on, I'm thinking, October the 7th um, from 1030 to 1230. And I think when you get uh, citizens in the same neighborhood where we all live, and we, we start picking up your trash or your debris and stuff, it kind of gives you a, a motivation um, to kind of clean up your property and help neighbors helping neighbors. It gathers people together and connect them together. So with that being said, um, I'm just asking the, um, the help of the council um, to create more dialogue about this particular thing. And I think when you create dialogue and you create an opportunity for people to be able to do stuff, 
you know, then they're going to come together and get it done. And I'm not a leader that's going to just say, let's get it done over and over through that camera right there. I'm actually going to get out there and walk the streets myself with those neighbors and help pick up trash if need be, debris, mattresses, and any other thing that's causing a discord. And I think it's inappropriate to be able to see something and know something, but yet do nothing about it. So that is my initiative. It's called Tight and Right. And if anyone wants to help, please give me a call. And I want to thank our mayor for allowing me to do this. Um, I also want to thank, um, hopefully, the sheriff department, if that might be so, and also Bo Dewey. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sherry. I think that this cleanup initiative is a good thing. We're actually going to take this idea and use it through all the districts. So you can, each to each council person, we can go through this. You can call it what you want. You can promote it like you want. But I think we'll try to do each district and kind of get on a schedule that uh, we start cleaning our town up. Uh, you'll see in our budget, I'm trying to get some money for a litter van. Mm -hmm. I'm working with uh, Judge Hike downstairs to do a litter abatement program throughout the city with the people that need community <clears throat> service hours. That's something that I really want to see done. But this is a great start, and then we're going to use this as a model to go to each district and you know get all of us involved, and I think it's a good thing. Okay. Thanks for doing it. Um, uh, also, too, cool. I wanted to um, add that um, at the end of the walk, um, of the cleanup initiative. We're going to have a tent set up um, for those that participated in it with some water, hopefully some food. But so far, I got lots and lots of drinks, but no food yet. So um, <laughs> uh, I will give you something to drink and some water, uh, hopefully, or maybe something to eat if we can get that too. Okay? Thank you. Dustin. I agree. I like the idea. Actually, you, I like the idea. I promise I won't steal your name from you. That's one thing. Um, but I think neighborhood watches, the neighborhood watch group that we have, mm -hmm. reach out to those neighborhood watch groups because they have a lot of volunteers that would probably want to step up and mm -hmm. help out in each district. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very creative. I just want to throw that out there. Thank you. The neighborhood watch groups is a way to, because uh, we already we talk to them on a daily basis already. Okay. So it's something we can look at as well. Reach out to them because I'm sure they would be willing to help. Yes, sir. So keeping the keeping the neighborhood clean, the district clean, is just as far as being a neighborhood watch. So that's right. Just wanted to let you know. That's right. Cool. Yes. Sherry, we uh, a couple of years ago the city did that. You remember, Natalie? Mm -hmm. Every district, uh, once a year, because we didn't want to do it too often because we wear the same people out that would clean up. But every district picked the weekend or Saturday and, um, and, and did it throughout that district. So uh, yeah, it was pretty neat. And they did a really good job. And they even had donations of people um, giving drinks or giving gloves or giving stuff to put trash in and they all met at one location yes, and then from that location they all took their little duties and it really did a great job it was very 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 good thing and it, somehow it just like everything else it just went away but I'm glad you brought it back up because it was a good thing uh, for not only the district but for the whole city yes sir thank you thank you cool further discussion all right madam clerk next time Mr. Dustin Swear to discuss and consider a resolution requesting the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to evaluate the outlet of Teep Bayou Channel M26 into Lake Dotry for a possible dredging project to increase drainage on the north side of Iberia Parish and resolution be sent to the Louisiana's congressional delegation to assist in a funded source from the federal government, all in cooperation with the Iberia Parish government. Thank you. Dustin. All right, first I want to th uh, thank uh, Parish Councilman uh, Gonsalan, Mr. Gonsalan, for showing up and showing some support and helping out in any way he can. I'm sure the parish is willing to help out as well. Um, I have here in front of me, I actually did a lot of research, uh, studies. I have one in my hand from 1981. And I researched the last one, which was 2011. And a lot of them, a lot of the, the, the points that were made in these, in these research and reports are very similar. Um, in 1981, they stated to, to do a couple of projects, uh, options as far as to help the drainage situation. One of those was to do the box behind Doe Tree Hospital, which has been done. I think it's a 72 inch pipes going into a 60, goes up underneath old, old Joint Road, Parkview, uh, by Burger King, and out to the Bayou Test. The rest goes out to towards Lake Foster Point, but then we do have a diversion called the Far Canal, which uh, that canal is labeled L26I, so I've been doing some research on this. That's good. 
Um, and it's very similar from 1981 to 2011. And I believe we have the, we've done a few, a few things to, to help it. And I think the parish was stepping up a few years ago doing the dredging project. Um, it, did do, it did do some work and it helped, it helped out a little bit. But at the same time, we're still having the same problems and it's just, it's starting to become an issue. So having all the information at hand, we've done study after study after study and spent thousands of dollars on these studies, on these studies. So I think it's time now that we go make the next step, make the next initiative to maybe reach out to the state, to the core, to get some help, get some guidance on what we can do. Um, if I can, if you don't mind, if you can call on Mr. Leroy, he knows more about this than anybody in this room, I'm sure. Uh, so, if you wouldn't mind, if you no. mind coming up. Mr. Leroy, could you come up for a second? <laughs> he is up. You don't, want to, you don't want to get deputized? <laughs> Hope you don't mind me calling you. No, 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 no. Don't mind. Thank and you for coming up, Mr. Leroy. We've done, we've, we've talked about it a, a, a quite a bit. The Far Canal was done, I'm not sure how long ago, uh, in the parish. It was, I was told it was done on one side, not the other. That, that was an issue. Um, it was done in the Free U administration. Uh, okay. and Mr. Longley did also. some of it. Yeah, yeah. but uh, the, the side that recently was clean was 2010, 2011. And so, I was told that they didn't do the other side due to some easement right. issues. Right, correct. So uh, that's another thing that maybe we can look at with the, the state also. Mm -hmm. um, T by U itself, it was dredged, it was cleaned three years ago, but now it's got trees growing up through it. It's got all debris in it. I'm saying this because I actually live along T by U. It's been a problem before I sat on this council, so I'm trying to bring it up to the people and let them be aware of what's, what's taking place. This is actually a major tributary for the north side of town. Um, it did, uh, putting the box like y'all did years back, did help the city park area, Lewis Street, drain into that box and divert it to the Tesh. But as we're going back towards Lake Fossey Point, mm -hmm. um, that's another, and it's, it's interesting that none of that was brought up in either one of these studies, Lake no. Fossey Point with no. the silt box. So is that another option that you, believe that we can look at as well. Another another diversion before you get to, I would say somewhere in the Emil Verrett area. Um, Bill Air subdivision. Okay. Another diversion to by your test. It's going to be one of your shortest distance, so less cost, and you could divert most of your water that's uh, building up in uh, Terra Court. And let it go to the bayou. This nice. is a box just like they built behind or larger, whatever size it would take. Is that the more, would you say, the more cost efficient, effective way to get things done? Or it, it would, would be, be the, one of the quickest ways. One of the quickest ways. Yes. Sometimes one of the quickest ways probably isn't the best, but we can, that's something we can look at. Yes. Also, uh, and, and more than likely, if the development continues, hopefully it would continue, you'll have to have another one somewhere as in the Bell Place, Olivia. Area. Right, that was, my, that was my last point. That was, a, that was a point I was going to bring up. We have future development coming, hopefully. Yeah. We want rooftops, more rooftops in those neighborhoods and those unincorporated areas, and that's going to be more cement than we can it, It's on. something can be done at the lake, but it'll take a long time to work it out through the core. I'll tell you that now. Okay. Well, I guess uh, that's why I appreciate Mr. Gonsolin being here. Yes. Yeah, and we need to, I think, speak up and, and Hopefully, maybe we can get some things done because, like I said, we've been doing studies this is before my time. I mean, 1981, I wasn't even born yet. So, <laughs> I just said my age, bro. Well. Um, but it's been going on for a long time. So, we have all the studies. I don't, I don't think it's feasible to be spending more and more money on studies than we can try and get with the core. I started in 67 with salt conservation. So, uh, <laughs> I, uh. <laughs> Talk about age. <eight>. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Yes, it used to work fine at the lake, you know, but all the development, it's a lot more rooftops. And so I, I said the best way would be to bring it to the bike. Right. Now we'll end up like Youngsville. They're building, yeah, it, building concrete. Uh, I think Fitzsimica has designed maybe two 40-acre retention ponds mm -hmm. uh, on the last study. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know how far they are going with the second phase yet for the parish, um, but that was mentioned. Okay. Uh, of course, that's land you can't develop. Mm -hmm. yeah. The diversion don't affect your development. Right. And uh, I don't think the few acres that you would be adding to the bio would affect it. You got a million acres that come through here in the city of New Iberia through Bayou Tech, so from North Louisiana. So uh, I don't think the few acres that you would throw in there would yeah, make, a big make a difference. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I appreciate you getting up and explaining. To the public. Yeah, any other questions? From me, no. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Leroy. I might I'll have, help you. I might have some. Get Oh, yeah, we try to get yours done. Yes, you talking about LD25? Uh, LD25. LD25. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, when I was a councilman in District 6 for 10 years, uh, we did do some things here. Mm -hmm. Did a lot of work here and um, with the help of the parish. But one thing we did do, we're talking about a 72 inch box drain that comes from behind doe trees through. Um, mm -hmm. It's 72 inch, but it doesn't carry much water. We went in there with a P roll at the hardest rain and not much water was coming out of it. No matter how big the box is, it was a good idea, but a lot's not being diverted to that box drain. Then, it, then farther down, we put those, they had those um, culverts in at Emile Verret. Mm -hmm. Took them out and put a span bridge. It made a big difference. The city, the parish came in and used, uh, got the right of way to dredge the canal for us. We ended up putting some more um, drainage on pre U. That's, T-Bayou goes all the way to there. And the far canal is in the parish. That is correct. So we stopped, we did whatever we could up to that. And the far canal, as uh, there was an issue because Joe Gonzalez, because uh, I, I did everything I could for that area because when they, they put that new subdivision in, um, I forgot what it's called, down Old Janet Road, all those houses started going into T-Bayou that we didn't have, that was Canefield. So, Joe Gonzalez had a pipe that went in the far canal that would go across the canal. Correct. You, and I think they lowered it right. underneath because that was stopping it. So they cleaned it all the way up to the old Generate Road. Yeah, city limit stops at Evergreen. Yeah. Well. So from old Generate Road towards the bayou, nothing was ever done to my knowledge after that. And they talked about, went all the way down in the parish last couple of years, mm -hmm. when they had all that commotion in Bel Air and that, right. cleaned some more. And the study that he's talking about, I, I remember, it, and I don't think no more studies need to be done, and they, they said that the lake was a little higher, you know, yeah. but that 72 inch box drain that's behind there, you could say it's 30 inch, because it doesn't carry much water. We went when the uh, culverts was so full that it was to the top of the culverts, went in that drain, and we could still go in that drain mm -hmm. because it got a little manhole you can go down and right, in right. it, and there was hardly no water coming out of it. That, that, even though it's a 72 inch box, I don't understand why water wasn't pouring out of, uh, out of that box. You know well, what I mean? Maybe, maybe by your test was high? Mm, not really. I mean, but I'm just saying, you know, 72 inch sounds big, but if you're using only uh, 18 inches of it, yeah. it looked like more water would be coming through that box drain to Bayou Tesh and not have to go down T by U. And in the middle of that, I'm going to tell you who was, and right after that, that's when I was out of office for four years, but it was Troy A. Bear was a senator, right. Mr. Will Long, a neighbor was mm -hmm. thing, Craig Merrill somewhere, else, and, and then we, after that, it just stopped. But that's something I need to be addressed is why the water is not coming out of that 72 inch box drain when it when it's pouring down rain. Yeah. And um, I know it was way over designed for yeah. the amount of uh, acres it was taking. Yeah, right. And uh, I mean, all of the Dotson Street area and Everett, yeah. all that area goes through that box. Because the city, uh, I'm a, uh, you know, the city did everything in their power to clean up up to the city limits. Mm -hmm. And then that's why it's so good to have a partnership with the parish now, sure. because they affect almost everything that we drain in this city. And I think, um, like Mr. Swear said, enough studies have been done. You know, we need to do some, turn in some dirt, but that's something need to be looked at because that is in the city, Mr. Leroy. And I just don't know why, maybe it's over design and it's too big and we can't get no more water, but if we could get some more water through there, then it would might relieve something. 
<laughs> well, that was mentioned to me, but if you open that side of that box to the generate side into T by U and try to bring water back to it. Uh, no, I'm just saying the water that's coming already to it, not bringing it back. Yeah. Why it's not going into that, that, that box, you know, being so big? Well, it only takes the Lewis Street side yeah. of the city. So you think the box was just over-designed? Over -designed. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Because whoever designed it, you can well, put... Yeah, it was DOTD. Okay. And fence to make it. I mean, bigger's not always better uh, when, when you... Okay, that's why, because we did a lot of work on that. And I, it was also designed for the LaSalle property. Yeah. If ever that's developed, right. that, they can go in there. Right. That can go in there. But, um, but I just, we did a bunch of work, and, and putting that span bridge helped a lot. I mean, big time, because it would clog up and it wouldn't even flow. Um, so thank you. I, I have just, just one just, more statement. The box that we're referring to, it takes the water from Lewis Street, diverts it to the Bayou Test, but the water that's being dropped after that, that no, box doesn't dump into T Bayou. The water that's being put on in T Bayou, that comes on behind Palm Land and yeah, between right, Oak right. Land and all those yeah, other areas. Fast. So something down that line, somewhere, is backing that up and backing and that's what he was saying about putting a bringing another box and bringing it back towards Lewis making like a diversion to flow into the Bayou test to, I guess you back flow it. but even a far canal yeah. that can handle a lot of water and it's not handling a lot of water because well, you'd have to widen it yeah it'd have to be wide but that's that's that far canal is right you know well you know where it's at but it's a pretty far downstream it is but you know, you need to get rid of. It. But um, I appreciate. It, but a lot of work has been done in the city, oh, yes. and and the parish. Thank goodness they had the equipment to do the cleaning, uh, because we on a city property we can't clean T by U, because it's all the houses. They have to get on the opposite side in that cane field and do it on the parish, and that's parish land. That's not city land. You know that, right? Yeah. Okay. The only, the only part that's on the city has both sides is palm land. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Leroy. Right. We got any Thank further discussion? Yeah. Great. Sure. Thank you all. Good discussion and a good partnership with the parish. All right. Now we go to Councilman Remarks. Councilwoman Lopez, start on your end. It's quiet enough. I deserve That's to go it. first. You go today. first. Ladies first. <laughs> um, no, the only thing I really have is that um, it's Sugar Cane Festival weekend. Um, for those of you who aren't aware, the fair has been moved. It is now um, off of Sugar Mill Road, where the, the old mill was. So that's where the fair is gonna be. Um, that is basically one street out of the way of District 1. And I don't know exactly what the Sheriff's Office plan plans to do as far as traffic diversion, but um, I am definitely expecting a high influx of vehicles in Acadian Acres. And I would just like to remind everybody that that is a um, neighborhood that is filled with children. Um, and the children there do a lot of walking. There's gonna be a lot of pedestrians. I believe kids from my neighborhood walking to the fair and those activities. So I would just ask that everyone be mindful of not only the Sugar Mill Road area and Daspit, um, but also downtown as we're gonna be having the fatal dose going on and with the parades and everything. Just please respect the Sheriff's Department and the job they do and follow their instructions. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna announce the town hall meeting I'm having for District 2 on October the 4th, which is a Wednesday night at six o'clock. Uh, we're gonna be discussing um, blighted property, uh, drainage, and, and our flooding issues, as well as crime and law enforcement. And um, ha as far as Sugar Cane Festival weekend goes, I, I, you know, I pray that everybody have a good time and um, keep the violence home. Keep the violence home. And let's enjoy this weekend together. Thank you. Yeah, of course we, we promote the Sugar Cane Festival, but what's cool about it, I think, talking about the Berry Queens, they have that candy toss parade. It is it's a hoot. I mean, it's a really good parade. It's really worth going to. If you had to pick a parade, go to that one, you know. Uh, 
support their efforts and bring the kids because this is one parade. You know, I feel sorry for those kids when they have the Queen's Parade and those parades. They starving for the candy and they throwing out one or two. You go to Candy Truck Parade, <laughs> they'll have a good time. So I encourage y'all bringing the children out there and um, and have a good time. Be safe, you know. It's a, it's a fun weekend, but it could be, uh, you know, always it could be a deadly one. But um, let's not hope on that. And I think the weather's going to be good. So have a good time and uh, fun and support New Iberia. Thank you. Thanks. In conjunction with the Sugar King Festival, there's a farm fest uh, being held on Thursday, this Thursday the 21st, at the Shadows from 4 to 8.30. Uh, it's old-fashioned uh, carnival-type games for eight, all ages, petting zoo, and there'll be music by Two in the Chamber. $10 admission per family, and tickets are available for purchase for food, drinks, and games. And also, uh, a night with Frank and Friends, Thursday uh, the 28th of September at the SME Theater, starting at 5.30. Uh, there'll be a silent auction from 5.30 until 7. And at 7 o'clock, there'll be uh, Spencer Rocca in concert as Frank Sinatra. Tickets are $50 reserved uh, and $35 general admission. Uh, and it ben the benefit is far beneath the ba balconies. Also, the neighborhood watch for districts four and five uh, will not be Thursday because of the sugarcane festival. It's going to be on September the 28th at six o'clock p.m. at the Slyman. And our featured speaker will be Mayor Freddie DeCourt. So I'm asking all um, members of the community to come out and listen to our mayor. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Appreciate it. Go. I have nothing, Mayor. Okay. Thank you. Dustin? I have one. She's going to kill me for this, but I see her in the front row. My wife's with leadership, and I want to recognize the leadership class for being here and doing the things they do for the city. So it's wonderful, it's in the leadership of Iberia, so great to support them. So thank you for being here. Great, thank y'all. Uh, I don't have any remarks tonight, and our next meeting is October the 3rd, 2017, and I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Got a motion and a second. Great, thank y'all.